Are you looking to pre-qualify home buyers in your real estate business? If you are, you've come to the right spot. I've got five amazing questions that you can ask new buyer prospects in order to understand where they're at in the home buying process. If you're a new real estate agent or you're just trying to up your skills, you've come to the right spot. On this channel, I give advice to real estate agents on how to improve their real estate career and how to get their real estate career off on the right track. My name is Marty Clement. I've been selling real estate for the past 15 years. In those years, I've had the chance to work at every single level of real estate, working on the administrative side as a solo agent and a team leader, doing over a million dollars in GCI for multiple years. Now, I like to coach agents just like yourself that are looking to improve their career. Like I said, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. So let's get right into it. I've got these five amazing questions that you can ask new buyer prospects. And at the end, I'll have a bonus six question that you can ask. So number one is a very interesting question and it serves a couple of purposes. So it's one question, but you know, it could qualify as two because it's gonna give you two pieces of information. So these buyer leads are buyer leads that you've never talked with before. They're either inquiring on an ad that you've got out there or somebody might have referred them to you saying, call these guys or you know these people, they want to buy a house. So the question you want to ask them is, are you looking at any other pieces of real estate? So if they're calling you on one of your listings and they say, we would like to see this property, ask them if they've looked at other pieces of real estate or if they want to look at other pieces of real estate other than the one being currently discussed. That means that you'll get a few pieces of information. They'll tell you if they're specifically interested in, in this property, if they are good. If they're looking at other pieces of real estate, they might be looking at it with other real estate agents. And that'll give you a very good indication if they're working with other real, realtors. So if they said, yes, we've looked at other properties, you can ask them, well, are you under a buyer agency with any of those agents that you saw the property with? If they are, I would recommend that you not spend that much time with these buyers because if you go show them a place and then they tell you two weeks or you know a month down the road, oh, we ended up buying a house with our agent because they've got a buyer agency with another agent, well, you've essentially wasted your time and you know their time also because they could have seen any property that they want to see with the realtor that they will eventually buy a property with. So asking this question can save you lots of headaches. It could save you lots of time. If they're not working with any other agent, great. Go and form a relationship with them. Go show them the property and then you might become their agent of choice. So that would be good. And when they transact, they'll transact with you. Number two, have you locked in your interest rate? That's question number two. This question is a way for you to ask, have you spoken with the bank? Or are you, a, are you able to purchase this property? People get really weirded out. Sometimes I would even say offended when you ask them, well, can you afford this house? And there's different ways of asking this question to make it, you know, more enjoyable for the buyer to, to answer truthfully. So saying to a buyer, have you locked in a rate yet? You know, that's, that's sort of a sneaky way of you know, making them feel comfortable about talking about their finances because eventually if they, they buy a property that's worth multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, they will need to have the means to purchase that property. Locking in a rate with a bank or a mortgage broker is something that you do once you have a pre-qualified uh, application for a mortgage with a bank. So if they've been through that process before, they'll tell you, yes, we've locked in a rate with such and such bank for 90 days and we got a rate of 2.25%, which is great, or you know, even lower uh, in these days. If they haven't been to the bank, they'll tell you, no, what's that? And then you can sort of introduce one of your bankers or your mortgage brokers, and it'll be of huge value to that prospect to get that pre-qualifying um, mortgage letter before they get going on shopping for real estate. And if you've listened to any other of my, my training videos, 
um, you'll know that I'm big on building a business by referral and asking this question will also open the door for you to refer out this buyer lead to one of your preferred mortgage partners. In, in return, growing your business because you're giving business to mortgage brokers or the banks and in return, they might send you some business down the road. So you can see how these questions are very powerful and we're only two questions in. Number three, when do you have to move? This is to establish a timeline. Some buyers will say, well, we got to move because uh, we're being evicted out of our property. Um, so we need to find a place in the next two months. That's great. You've got a stable timeline and you know exactly when these buyers need to buy. So that'll give you a very good idea of you know, how urgent this is and you need to take care of these buyers right away. They're very, very, um, you know, they're, they're very excited to buy. So this is great. It could be an eviction. It could be we have to buy before August uh, 25th because the kids are starting in school in September or we have to find a, a house in the next three months because I'm starting a new job in you know, this area or wherever. If buyers are saying anything like that, that they have to buy because of, that's great. That's the best type of buyers. They've got a timeline and you can help them find a place. They're motivated. If they say, well, we don't really know, we're just looking, that's okay also. It's fine, you know, a lot of times when I've bought properties in my life, it's been, well, we're just gonna go look. If it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It was sort of like, a, it would be nice to have. And that's okay, there's a lot of buyers like that, but you just have to put them in different boxes in your, um, in your sales process. They're not what I would call urgent buyers. They're, they're, they might be qualified as B buyers in my, um, in my sales process and I wouldn't I wouldn't put the same urgency behind helping these people they're still good buyers and they still eventually will buy if you give them good service but there, you just need to understand those two different types of buyers the motivated motivated buyer this, that need to buy for a certain time and the ones that it really doesn't matter when they buy number four do you have a house to sell so this is another great question and it's going to give you multiple pieces of, a, of information. If they say, no, we don't have a house to sell, we're actually renting. Well, then you follow up with when is your lease over? That might help you quest, uh, answer question number three, which is when do you need to move by? Um, if you ask them the question, do you have a house to sell? And they say, yes, we actually do have a house to sell. Well, that's a very good buyer lead because it means that you could potentially get a listing also out of it. So the question you want to you want to ask is the follow up question to that number five. If you do have a house to sell, would you like me to come over for a home evaluation after we see this property? That is of huge value to anybody that's looking to sell a property. The agent is going to show them a property, and then right after they're going to go over for a home evaluation. These types of back-to-back -back appointments have been some of the most productive in my career because you get to meet somebody for the first time, you show them the place, and then you go directly to their house to give them an evaluation. It's huge value for them. And in most cases, we don't charge them, right? It's, it's a free home evaluation. So they're very, very um, appreciative of the time that you've put in and of the value that you'll give back to them. And it gives you, um, an excuse to follow up the next day or even that afternoon once you've completed your evaluation of the property or your comparative market analysis. We've got some other videos on how to do that on the channel, but that question, number five, do you have a house to, uh, sorry, number four, do you have a house to sell? Followed up with, if they say yes, would you like a home evaluation? Very powerful stuff and it's definitely helped me uh, lock up some top quality prospects over the year, over the years. And number six, a bonus question. This one is a bit more difficult to ask and depending on how the conversation goes, if you feel like you've got a good rapport with the, the buyer there, you could ask them the question, are you the main decision maker when it comes time to submit an offer? And sometimes people that you speak with aren't the main decision maker. It could be a younger person that's relying on their parents for financing. It could be a husband calling you and 
you know, even if he sees a place and he likes it, he'll need to speak with his wife about it. You know, there's all different types of situations out there. And you need to make sure that the decision maker will be there on the showings. Because there's nothing worse than a buyer seeing a property, wanting to buy it, and then you having to go back for a second showing with the actual decision maker and either them saying, oh, well, this house, you know, you, you won't be buying this house or saying they don't like the house as much as the person that you showed it first or even worse, the property selling uh, in between the first showing and the second showing. So you want to get clear on who the actual decision maker is. And you got to figure out if you can ask that question. It's, it's one of the more most awkward um, questions to ask, but if you can get that information, I'd say that you're on the right track to you know, having the buyer fully pre-qualified. You know exactly what you're getting yourself into. So though, there you have it. Those are the five questions that I would ask and the bonus question number six, who's the decision maker? Those have been with me for pretty much my entire career and they've really helped me uh, get an understanding of where I'm heading with new buyer prospects. And having them qualified as either you know, A buyers or B buyers or even you know, deleted buyers because they won't answer any favorable, favorable answers to any of these questions, it's, it saved me a lot of time in my real estate career. It, it really showed me who I should focus on as far as a buyer and who I should maybe not spend as much time um, following up with, uh, trying to get out and show properties to. So I hope these helped you. And like I said, if you guys are new to the real estate industry or you're looking to improve your sales career, check out my channel. There's tons of good content on there. I try to put uh, new pieces of content out every single week. And if you're enjoying this, leave a like. If you want to see more stuff like this, hit that subscribe button. It'll be my pleasure to deliver you a new video every single week. I'll see you guys on the next video. Ciao.